Hello beautiful people and welcome to finally another Hypatia devlog Now you may be wondering Why haven't you made another devlog in half a year? So do you remember the five devlogs before this? Yeah, where like I did all that stuff Yeah, well all of that is in the basura and we're starting fresh Pero like why are we starting fresh? Well, Godot walked past me and it was so sexy that I had to switch. So after switching game engines, I experienced a bit of burnout for working on the same project for six months, so I needed a little bit of a break. So on my break from Hypatia, I developed Jumpity Doo Da. Link here for that video on the development. After Jumpity Doo Da, I developed Tarantaput, which I spent three days on, and it's a shooting platformer that takes place during the plague. Then after that, I did Raptor, which is a space shooting game where you get power-ups and you fight waves of enemies. That game is really fun. Check it out on itch. And then I developed Spider Stop, which is a speed typing game, and you have to finish the love story. Go ahead, try it. They're all on itch with the code on GitHub. Yay! By the way, all these games were developed on Twitch. Go to Twitch if you want to see me cry. So after making all these games, I decided to join the big boys and I tried out 3D. So I was really into Don't Starve at the time, which is a weird 2D, 3D environment. So I was prototyping that at first. And then I really wanted to make like a third person survival game because I was playing a, a bit of Valheim and it was kind of creeping into my mind. And while I was working on that, for a while, I felt something inside of me. It was nostalgia for Hypatia. So I scrapped the 3D survival game and I went back to Hypatia development. This time it feels a lot different. I feel like I have a lot more confidence as a game developer and I just feel ready. So let's finally discuss the progress I've made in the meantime. So the most obvious difference here is the art. I made a new tile map and also released the old one for free on itch.io. And I redrew the main character in all his attack animations and rolling animations kill me. I also did it in a way that will help me in the future when I want to add new weapons. You see the animation is generic slash animation and I add the weapon as a separate sprite so I can animate its position in the animation player. You don't generally get as clean of an animation as manually drawing the weapon in each frame, but since I have a crazy amount of pixel art to draw as it is and I would like to add more weapons, this makes it a lot easier to do so because the animations work for different sprites. We also added a new weapon type for magic. For now we only have one water attack but you get the gist. The UI for the character might seem familiar to some Elden Ring, but that was more of a placeholder. It will change when my brain thinks of something cool and original. And we also have the outline for some of the interfaces that we are going to have, like a menu for learning more about the gods mythological creatures, and the people of ancient Greece that you will encounter. Also, we have a skill tree to invest your points in and a quest menu where you can organize what quests you need to complete and which you've already completed. These are really the skeleton of what is to be. There is bare to no code for these systems. I've also added a new area to the game, Bideos. Since starting new, I really wanted to downscope the game. So instead of including many Greek cities like Rhodes, Syracuse, Alexandria, etc., I'm thinking of keeping it to the Athens area, which has Pereas as its port city. Maybe if there's time and resources, we can add more cities. But for now, we'll have to keep it local and stick to the area around Athens. Plus, in Plato's book, The Republic, it starts off with Socrates and Glaucon attending a festival in Pereos and running into some friends. I think it would be cool to parallel the works with my game and get some real scenarios from works of philosophy. The statues of the gods have returned and you will need to unlock them in order to gain access to the skill trees of their representatives. I'm thinking of how the system for god abilities will work and what the art will look like. I like games who mix different mediums of art, like having pixel art for the game and vector art for the UI. Another important added feature is the dialogue system. This is a feature that tortured me in Unity. I first tried implementing it on my own, and then I went to ink in Unity so that the character can choose different paths, but then I hit a roadblock when I wanted to have different paths trigger events. Disclaimer, I'm an idiot, and the roadblock could have been to my critical thinking capabilities. But honestly, when I moved to Godot and used Dialogic, it was so slapping easy that I really don't understand. Shout out to Emmy for making the plugin. Check him out on YouTube. He's really doing some amazing work. So the dialogue system is... <laughs> So the dialogue system is able to communicate with the quest system to trigger events or signals in Godot jargon. And the code that I come up for this is absolutely hideous and needs to be cleaned up. So I don't even consider these features remotely done. I'm just glad that it's possible and the connections are there. Finally, I did some combat with Silenus the Blower and the Bear. I'm not very satisfied with how I programmed the Bear. 
I want the basic enemies to have a smoother and smarter movement, so at the moment I'm experiencing with different state machines. I've been heavily influenced by Elden Ring and how rich the boss fights are, so you might notice some elements which have been carried over, but it's much different when you convert it to a 2D plane. Which Godot does much better than Unity. Ugh, Unity, ugh, Unity pseudo, ugh, Unity pseudo 2D sucks. All in all, I've had so much crap and fun developing in Godot. Things just seem a lot easier and better, and make a lot more sense. I like how Godot structures the element and the whole concept of scenes, notes, trees, and whatnot. Signals were much easier for me to use and grasp in the event system in Unity. Singletons are a lot easier to use in Godot, and I don't know, in Unity there are many stupid issues that would stall development for a long time, and there were these feelings of helplessness that frustrated me so much. Maybe I created many of these things in my mind because I like Godot so much, or maybe it's the experience and knowledge of developing games that has made the Godot journey easier for me. I'd like to add that there is a lot less content on Godot compared to Unity. Unity has been out much longer, but the Godot community is growing day by day, and it's also an opportunity for people to join the scene and make content themselves. By the way, I make Godot content, did you know that? Now all these things I've said about Godot applies to 2D development. I'm not sure which one is smoother in terms of 3D. I did do one experiment where I converted world gen from Unity and copied it line for line in Godot script, and I found that I couldn't generate as much terrain in Godot as Unity. But if I used the C-sharp language support, it would probably work. But this is the only issue I have encountered. That's why my opinion is confined to 2D. I have no regrets with the moves. It was daunting at first, but has paid off tenfold. When you gain knowledge along the way, work done is never in vain. Thank you so much for sticking around. And if I made you chuckle or blow air out of your nose slightly, consider subbing and giving that like button a nice gentle smash. Okay, I gotta go, bye! <laughs>